Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, recently, uh, in China, on Chinese social media, um, there are some quite popular uh, social um, influencers. Um, they got divorced, and they're also international marriage. So. Let's say the wife is Chinese and the husband is German, or the wife is Chinese and husband is American. A few couples, they're all quite popular couples on Chinese social media, and they all recently announced they are getting divorced. So that just got people thinking about international marriage. Is it working? <laughs> and there is quite a lot of discussions recently. So I just want to um, yeah, talk about the challenges for international marriage. Um, I can think of three big challenges, uh, and I'm going to talk about each one. The first one, the second one, I think, yeah, there are challenges, but they're still OK. And I'll talk about the solutions. There are difficulties, challenges, and how can we solve the problems. And the number three, um, it's very, very important. I hope you wait and listen to number three, the point. Um, okay, so the first challenge is uh, food challenge. If you have international marriage, you're from different country, different backgrounds. If I think food is a huge part of your life, right? Um, like I'm Chinese, I obviously like Chinese food and Asian food. Um, uh, but you know, food is food. Um, I think, um, yeah, so, and like, I don't like to eat sandwiches, but maybe your partner, you know, they eat sandwiches and they like to eat different kind of food. That's fine. I think um, the solution is still there. Um, in my family, it's mainly me who, who does all of the cooking. So I'll just make sure we eat healthy. So the solution is to try to, I think for both of you, just try to be adventurous and try different food. Just give it a try and see if you like it or not. Sometimes people could be very stubborn. They don't like to try new food. But what do you do when you marry someone from a different country? You have to try their food, right? If you really don't like it, let's find something in common and you both like. Um, and also, especially if you've got children, so if you want to eat together, and obviously you want to eat something quite healthy, um, yeah, so just cook something healthy, whatever cuisine that might be, Chinese, Italian, uh, Japanese food, you know, whatever. So for food, challenge the solution is try to cook something healthy and try to be adventurous and try different food and see what you both like. Okay, and number two is cultural difference. I think many people talk about, you know, cultural differences. And um, when you're from different culture background, you have different culture. Um, I think the main thing is you need to really understand each other's cultures and understand it and respect it that's very very important um, for your marriage so make sure you two before you get married spend enough time <laughs> if you can live in different countries you know your country and your partner's country and really understand the culture and the people and how you think that's that's very very important um, because many people, they can't really get on or they got problems, they got issues because they don't fully understand each other's culture. And, you know, they say, okay, I don't like it and that's enough. Um, so that's very important. Make sure you understand and respect each other's culture. Um, the reason I said is why this is very important is because it's going to affect your life your marriage life later on. I'll give you a very simple example. For example, uh, in China, um, it's our law. We got to look after our parents when they can't look after the, when they can't look after themselves or they don't want to go to a care home. And you have to look after them. And that's not you have to look after them. You know, they're your parents. You love them. You know, you want to help. 
you know, that's our law in China. If you don't, then your parents can simply just sue you, send you to court, you know, and then you have to look after them. So that's very important. Well, for example, here in UK, you know, you, you don't have to. It's not your law, right? Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's not your law. You look after your parents because, you know, they need, because you love them and you want to. And, um, oh, if you think you can, so they can go to a care home. Um, yeah. So um, it's very important you need to understand because if you don't, I guess you're going to argue a lot. Um, because when your, your parents, for example, if my parents uh, in China, if they need any help, and I need to make sure somehow I can help. Um, yeah. Um, and also, uh, the other example I know, I know in many Asian countries, um, um, people, they, let's say they work in different countries and they still need to send the money back home to their parents or their families to support them. You know, that's another cultural difference. If you marry someone, let's say from India or from uh, Philippines, just a simple example, there are other countries they do the same. So they work and and they got a salary, they want to send maybe half or, or whatever percentage of their salary back home to support their family. That's, that's, that's what they do and they always been doing that. I imagine if they marry someone British and your British husband said, oh, hang on a minute, we also need the money and you can't do that anymore. So that's kind of things you need to have agreement before you get married. And how are you gonna do it, you know? Because, you know, like say if you're married and you want to send 30 or 50 percent of the salary to your mom and dad back home, but your husband doesn't agree because we got a family and we got children, we need the money, you know. Um, and from your point of view, it's your culture, right? But from your partner's point of view, you know, he's also right because you got your own family now, you also need it. I'm not saying who is right, who is wrong, but the cultural difference is there. So make sure you both have agreements. And when you have issues like this, talk about it and make sure you solve this problem. And make sure you solve the problems before you get married. Um, my advice anyway. And number three, I think this is a very, very important, is a challenge when you get divorced. Um, I think for every marriage, um, you know, it's not easy. Marriage is never easy. Not too sure if you watch the documentary about the very famous uh, British uh, gypsy guy. What's his name? Uh, Tyson Fury. Is it Tyson Fury? And his wife um, is called Paris, I think. I remember she said something. She said, I love you. I hate you. <laughs> They've been married for years and they got five children, I think. You know, so um, I think in every marriage, you have the moment you're like, oh, that's enough. I have enough. You know, you, you get really frustrated. And when you have a problem, so, you know, when you have really tough time. So no one can guarantee you have a marriage and it's a happy ending, you're gonna be you know, happy every single day and all for the rest of your lives. I just think things don't always go very well. So um, if at one point you do, you, you know, you think I have enough and I want to get divorced, for international marriage, that's also very challenging. Um, first of all, you live in different countries, right? and you follow different laws so make sure you all understand this and if, especially if you have children and what your children gonna do are you gonna move back to your own country or you stay here and and all of that for this point i can only just uh, um, share something i think that's quite important for the um, ladies who are in the same situation you move to one country, your husband's country. Well, 
if if you if you over there and you move to your wife's country, same, all right. So because I have friends, uh, they're from Japan, South Korea, um, um, Colombia, and different countries. They moved to UK because their husbands are British. So they got two and three children here together, and some of them uh, they got divorced. Um, yeah, so for international marriage, even you get divorced, it's not easy. It's not like you both from the same country, and you know it's easier. Well, I don't think any any divorce is easy. But what I'm saying is, if you're from different countries, it's gonna be even harder. One thing I just want to share um, something like um, if you like a situation, you move to one country, your husband's country, and you left your family and friends behind, and maybe your job. Um, especially if your children are quite small, and in UK it's so expensive to send kids to nursery because. Let's say where I am, all of the nurseries around us is at least two grand a month. So, uh, you know, in many situations, I think the moms just don't think it's worth it to send your kids to nursery. So you just look after uh, the small children or babies. Um, I just want to mention one thing. No one wants to get divorced, but if you're in a country and it's not your country and you give up everything you have in your home country and move to this country and sometimes you feel like okay um i gave up uh, my career and my job and then i moved to a new country um, for your small family um, and then you have children here um, I think one issue is if you get divorced, then you feel like you don't really have anything apart from your children. And your husband obviously could continue to pay for whatever you grade for the kids, right? Until the kids are 18. As far as I know, for British, for the laws here, um, your British husband probably doesn't need to give you anything. And um, imagine if you got no jobs and you got one or two or maybe three children and you're in that situation, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay here or are you going to you know, move back to your own country? So these are all the things we need to consider. Um, but again, I don't want to talk too much about divorce or these negative things, um, even though things like this they do happen. So for the ladies, well, or <laughs> gentlemen, if you're in this kind of situation, and what can we do? I just want to maybe just to suggest people like this situation, you leave your home country and you move to your own country for, you move to a different country for your partner and you got your family here, you got children. Um, and also because especially when children are younger, uh, there is only one of you can continue to work. And usually, uh, I'm, not think, I'm not seeing every family, but usually it's the husband, they go to work. They can continue to clap up their corporate letters. And the older they get, the more working experience they have. So they're actually adding up their value, you know, for themselves. But for the ladies, you stop working, which means you don't have working experience and you look after the family, you look after the kids. Um, that's what I'm saying. If you get divorced, you're in a not really good position. So the solution for me, I think what you can do is, even though you're not working, still try to think a plan. Are you going back to work? And then when? And also check your degrees you get or the qualifications you get because different countries, you know, you might need a different degrees. Make sure you uh, check that. Um, if you were, you know, a, a doctor, for example, in your home country, 
but in UK you can't work straight away because you need to check. I think it's called the GMC. It's kind of like a website. You need to make sure you register and you know. Anyway, whatever you did before, whatever your job was before, make sure if you could continue to work in this new country, and if you want to do that, and what kind of things do you need to do, just start preparing and start checking. Um, and if you don't work, is there anything interesting you? Do you want to be a baker, or do you want to be a hairdresser, or whatever you want to do? You know, just just slowly. Brightly look into it and see how you can still、uh, carry on working or、uh, chase up your own dreams.、Um, yes, and just stuff like that. If you don't have anything while you're looking after your younger children,、uh, is it possible for you to work part time, or is it possible for you to study、um, like part time? Just all of these things you need to consider. And、um, for example, myself,、um, I was a freelancer, like a Chinese and language、um, interpreter. And when I moved here,、um, oh, COVID really ruined our industry. That's another story. So I didn't work too much. And my second daughter was born here, so she was a baby and very small. And I just mainly look after her and. Look after the family, but now children are bigger. They're in school full time, so I could do more work, and I need to think、uh, how I get more work, and you know, just stuff like that. So anyway,、uh, whatever you do, just make sure you maybe prepare, prepare what you need to do, and consider it. Do you want to go back to work? And if you do, what kind of things do you need to do? Do you need a new degree? Do you need to get registered? And what kind of preparation you need to do? And or if you want to continue、uh, to study, and what kind of you know like major would you like to? What kind of stuff would you want to study? Or you just want to be a freelancer? Or what do you want to do? Because ideally, you can do something while you look after your children. Maybe you can work part time. That would be brilliant. If not, just think what kind of things you can do at the same time. So when you get divorced, I wish everybody has a very happy marriage. But when you're in the situation, you feel like you need to get divorced. You're in a better position. You could either, you know, you're already back to work. And you got salary, you could support yourself, because like I said, your husband probably only pay for whatever you grade for your children, but not you. Well, when you think about it, sometimes I think men and women is not really fair. I think even for local people, for British, I know many moms they give up their jobs to look after young children and the family, and then you know if they get divorced, you know. <laughs> Anyway, so I think it's some kind of like it's same. It's just for international marriage is probably a little bit difficult for the women if you're in the same situation like I described earlier. So yeah, that's all I want to share. Um, and life is not easy, and it's kind of like a little bit heavy when we talk about getting divorced, but it does happen. So um, yeah. So when you know we have problems, we try our hardest to solve the problem. And if we can't, and if you're in the stage, you need to get divorced. And what do you need to do? And、um, especially for international marriage, yeah, there is some more to consider to think about. Anyway, I hope everyone has a very happy marriage, and、um, yeah, and have a lovely day. Bye.